Hello everyone, here we talk about the empirical rule. Empirical rule approximates the variation of data in a bell-shaped distribution. Here we only focus on the data collection that has bell-shaped symmetrical distribution. Only under this condition and we have this empirical rule few statements. The first one, approximately 68% of the data in the bell-shaped distribution are within one standard deviation of the mean. Here it shows if we have this data collection has mean, mu, that is the average value or center value. And then from this center, we can measure the distance standard deviation sigma as the red line shown on the screen. Both sides we measure this length so we can get the left side mu minus sigma and the right side mu plus sigma. So this interval can be expressed as mu plus minus one sigma or we use bracket left side and the right side. So the first statement of empirical rule basically tells about 68% of the data are located in this interval. So basically empirical rule described how data gather around the center value. With the knowledge of this empirical statement, we can also make the following statements as the basic facts for bell-shaped symmetrical distribution. Since it is a symmetrical, so the 68% of the center part of data can be separate two parts. From mu minus sigma to the center mu, we should have about 34% data. And on the other side, we also have 34% of the data. So outside of this center area should have 32% because overall under this bell-shaped curve 100% data will there. In that case, each side we have 16% of the data. So 16% of the data value smaller than mu minus sigma and another 16% of data value are bigger than mu plus sigma. Second statement, approximately 95% of data in the bell-shaped distribution lies within two standard deviations of the mean. So that is mu plus minus two sigma. Similarly, we measure two standard deviation distance from center to the left side to the right side. So mu minus two sigma and mu plus two sigma. So here is the interval. Based on that fact, we can also make the following statements as the basic facts for the bell-shaped symmetrical distribution. 47.5% of the data value are between mu minus two sigma and mu. And another 47.5% of data are between mu and mu plus two sigma. Again, outside the total we have 5% because it is symmetrical, so each side will have 2.5%. So 2.5% of the data, their value is smaller than mu minus 2 sigma. And 2.5% of data, their values are bigger than mu plus 2 sigma. The third statement, approximately 99.7% of the data in the bell-shaped distribution lies within the standard deviation of the mean. So here we measure three standard deviation. From center, the left side mu minus three sigma, right side mu plus three sigma. So here is the interval. So this statement says almost all the data 
99.7% belong to this interval. Similarly, we can also make the following statements as a basic facts for bell-shaped symmetrical distribution. We have 49.85% of data values are between mu minus 3 sigma and the mu. We have another 49.85% of data values are between mu and the mu plus 3 sigma. And outside, on the left, we have 0.15% of data smaller than mu minus 3 sigma. And on the right side, we have 0.15% of data are bigger than mu plus 3 sigma. The third statement is also called the 3 sigma rule. Sometimes they put both sides together, also called the 6 sigma rule. Basically tells in this center area, almost all the data belong to this range. This 3 sigma rule is very popular in construction uh, manufacturing uh, situation for the quality control. Here's an example. The rental rates in the neighborhood is considered as a symmetrical bell-shaped distribution. If the average rental rate is $1,500 and the standard deviation is $300, what kind of reasonable statements can we make? about the rental rates based on empirical rule. So based on this information, we can simply look at one standard deviation, $300, two standard deviation would be $600, three standard deviation would be $900. So we use these three standards and from the center, we find out the interval and we can make statement. So the first one would be, we can say, about 68% of the rental rates in this neighborhood are between $1,200 and $1,800. Again, about 95% of the rental rates in this neighborhood are between $900 and $2,100. So if we use the center value minus $900 plus $900, we would get $600, $2,400. So almost all the rental rates, or we say about 99.7% of the rental rates in this neighborhood are between $600 and $2,400. These are the basic statements directly from empirical rule. And we can also make more reasonable statements for this neighborhood. Here are some examples. About 34% of the rental rates are between $1,500 and $1,500. About 16% of the rental rates are above $1,800. About 47.5% of the rental rates are between $1,500 and $2,100. About 2.5% of the rental rates are below $900 and 2.5% of the rental rates are higher than $2,100. Only 0.15% of the rental rates are cheaper than $600. Also, only 0.15% of the rental rates are more than $2,400. Here's another example. A data collection has symmetrical bell-shaped frequency distribution and all the data are between 32 and 122. Estimate the average value and the standard deviation of this data collection. Since the data range is between 32 and 122, the distribution is symmetrical. So the average value should be the center of this range. We can simply calculate this average value based on the lower limit and the upper limit. We get 77. That is the mean we can estimate. With this mean, we can measure the distance from center to both end, they should be equal. So the distance is 45 from 122 minus 77 or from 77 minus 32. We get 45. Based on empirical rule, this 45 should be about 3 sigma.
So in that case, we can solve from 45 divided by 3. We got standard deviation about 15. So this is all about understanding empirical rule. Understand all the statements. Understand what they are talking about. Basically, give you the three statements about the data allocation. Only for symmetrical bell-shaped distribution. See you next time.